Hi everyone, this is an Amalgia video for Animal Crossing New Horizons on the Nintendo Switch, and today we're going to be talking about how to get the Resident Services building and how to get KK Slider to come play a concert in your town. While this video will mostly focus on what you need to do in order to satisfy Tom Nook's requests in order to get the town ready for KK Slider, there are some prerequisites. Firstly, you need to have taken out a home building contract and unlocked Nook Miles Plus. You also need to have unlocked the vaulting pole, the ladder, and given Timmy and Tommy the items that they need in order to upgrade the store to Nook's Cranny. When Tom Nook gives you the ladder, he asks you to build a bridge in town and also to build three homes, which requires making specific pieces of customizable furniture. First, let's talk about making and placing the bridge, and then we'll talk about making the homes. Keep in mind that when you build this bridge, it's a customizable kit that you assemble at the workbench, but you can only make one. This is not a way to make multiple bridges. After Tom Nook's lengthy explanation, make sure to talk to him again and click on what should I do in order to advance further. Once you select what should I do, Tom Nook will send the bridge construction kit DIY to your Nook phone automatically. The bridge costs four log stakes to make, four stone, and four clay. The log stakes cost three wood each, so you'll need a total of 12 wood in order to make the bridge. The stone and clay come from hitting rocks in your town with tools, but you should be accustomed to gathering those materials by now. Click on the bridge construction kit and make it in order to have it appear in your inventory. You place it like the other houses that you've had to place in town so far, but it has to be stretched across a body of water. The water needs to be four squares across, but then also there needs to be four open squares on both edges where it's going to connect to the land in order to construct. My personal recommendation is to put it relatively close to the beach so that you have an easy time running across it when searching your beaches. But ultimately, the positioning is up to you. With the bridge constructed, it's time to build the three homes that Tom Nook mentioned. With the bridge placed, go back and talk to Tom Nook and select what should I do in order to advance further. Keep in mind you don't need the bridge to be created. It will take a day in order for that to happen. But he can give you the home kits that you need in order to do the next phase in advance. This home placing process is similar to those that you've done before where you put the kit on the ground and then it reserves a square of land for a structure to be built in the future. The only difference is that these homes need a little bit more space around the edges because not only will you need to deliver specific items in the boxes in front of the homes in order to complete the quest, but you'll also need to decorate around the homes in order to finish. Tom Nook automatically sends the DIYs to your phone but you need to click on the boxes outside of each plot you place in order to figure out which furnishings go with which home. Clicking on the box also lets you check which items will go in the box for the interior and which ones will be used to decorate the exterior by placing them around the home. Once you've completed all the furnishing work for each home, you'll get a message that says you've completed your work, and now you have to go back and talk to Tom Nook. Once you tell him that everything's finished, he'll congratulate you. Something to keep in mind though is even though you built all three homes, only one villager will move into one of the homes each day. So it'll take three days in order for everybody to move in. As a reward for building the three homes, Tom Nook also gives you the ability to make and place fencing. Fencing can really spruce up your town and it gives you the ability to customize it in ways that you didn't really have access to before. Something else to keep in mind about fencing is that you can get new fencing DIYs from the Nook Stop terminal by purchasing them with Nook Miles. There's usually two up each day and they change every day, so you always gotta check back to see if you have a new one there. Although there is a point at which you reach all the ones that you can have and no new ones appear. Each new fence DIY costs a thousand Nook Miles, and it's good to get used to building fences around your town because they're weighted heavily for how the island is assessed when KK Slider comes to town. 
Also, while you're waiting for the new villagers to come to town, make sure to talk to Tom Nook in order to do his customization workshop. He'll tell you about it, but then you have to click on about that workshop when you talk to him in order to actually partake in it. He asks you to make a wooden wardrobe, and then he gives you customization kits, and he shows you the general process for customizing furnishings in this game. With the customization workshop completed, if you've already turned in all the items that you need in order to upgrade Nook's Cranny, and once the three new residents move to the island, Nook should automatically upgrade the tent to a resident services building, and Isabel will move into town and start working at the center with Tom Nook. With the resident services building now built, there will be a lengthy explanation on the new features that it has to offer. This is actually how you place new bridges and inclines in your town by talking to Tom Nook at the construction consultation counter, and also how you can move villager homes around, your own home around, and even uh, customize the exterior of your house. Isabel, on the other hand, allows you to change the town flag, change the town tune, and you can also report villagers for certain things. But keep in mind that reporting villagers for certain things only resets either the clothes, designs that they're wearing, or the things that they're saying, but it won't actually make them leave town. After the explanation of how the resident services building works, talk to Tom Nook and click on You Wanted My Help. He'll explain that he has a goal and a dream that he wants K.K. Slider to come play in the plaza at town. But in order to make the town attractive enough for someone like K.K. Slider to come play, there's a few projects that need to be completed. For some reason, the game makes you talk to Tom Nook again and click on what should I do in order to get more details about his plan to have KK come to town. The first major step is that he's going to want you to build a campsite somewhere in town. Like the bridge, it's a one-time build and one-time use item, and you'll have to construct it yourself using the DIY that he gives you. The campsite costs 15 wood, 15 softwood, 15 hardwood, and 15 iron nuggets in order to build. You place the campsite like the other buildings you've placed so far, and it takes one day after placement in order to build. After placing the campsite, go back and talk to Tom Nook, and he'll remark that you found a good place for it. While the campsite provides you a way to get new villagers to come to your town one day at a time, what the game doesn't tell you is that you actually need a total of eight villagers to come to town in order to be able to get enough ratings to have KK Slider come to town. Another thing that you're going to need to do after the campsite has been built is talk to Tom Nook and he'll explain to you that you can now reserve plots of land. For some reason, reserving a plot of land for a new villager to come to town costs 10,000 bells and he doesn't reimburse the money after they move in, but he reimburses you with Nook miles. It's a, it's a very odd system. Once you reserve all the plots of land you need in order to have eight villagers, the real way to speed up villagers moving to town is to go to Nook Miles Islands and find villagers wandering around next to campfires and then invite them to move to town. The Nook Miles tickets in this respect are really useful so that you're not at the mercy of whoever comes to the campsite once a day. Until you have eight villagers in your town, the feedback that you can request from Isabel about how the town is progressing will always give your town a one-star rating, even if it would be higher. Town star ratings go from one star to five stars, and it's a similar process like previous Animal Crossing games where you're trying to reach perfect town status. But in order to get KK to play, fortunately, you only need to have a three-star town. Once you have eight villagers in town, Isabel can give you hints as to what you need to do in order to make the town a better place to have KK Slider come and get your star rating up. While similar to old Animal Crossing games, there are requirements concerning trees and flowers. You can't have too many trees, you can't have too few trees, and tree spacing needs to be correct as well. You also need to have some flowers, but in regards to trees and flowers, the requirements aren't nearly as stringent as previous Animal Crossing games have been. Just make sure that each tree has at least one space all around it and that they aren't touching any walls or edges of any buildings. And try to plant enough flowers. I really don't think you need that many, but if she says something to you about it, then just plant more. It's not really that hard to buy the bags of seeds and put them down. 
The big thing in this game about how to increase your star rating is actually fencing and putting down DIY items that you've made yourself and things you've bought from Nook's Cranny and decorating the town. I was a little surprised at how much fencing this game expects you to use, so just put fencing down. It doesn't really seem to matter where you put it or what type it is. What does matter, though, is for the items that you either DIY or buy from Nook's Cranny, you have to put a lot of them down. You get more points for different varieties of items. So if you were to put up 50 torches or something, you'd still get points for all those torches, but it would not be nearly as much as if you'd put down 50 different items. 50 isn't a hard number for the items that you would need to put around town in order to get a 3 star rating, but I did notice that you did need a lot of items around town in order to achieve a higher star rating. Once you finally land a 3 star rating from the rating system, Isabel and Tom Nook will remark that the rating that gave your town 3 stars was written by somebody named KS. Nook will then call KK Slider and the next day he will come and play a concert for your town. It was a lot of work to get to the point where you could land a 3 star rating, but the next day Isabel will announce that KK Slider is giving a concert in town, and then the concert sequence will automatically play out in the plaza. The credits of the game will roll, and then KK will re make his remarks to the crowd. The last thing to keep in mind is that after KK plays his initial concert, he'll show up in your town every Saturday and play a concert at 6pm. It works like it does in the other Animal Crossing games where you can ask him to just play a random song or you can request a specific song or pick a mood. But that's the way to get specific KK Slider songs other than ordering them from the Nook Stop. Also, as a special bonus, KK Slider will give you a track titled New Horizons, which is basically his version of the game's title theme that you can use to play in whatever music player you have in your home. If you reach this point, congratulations, and hopefully KK Slider coming to play at your town and giving you songs is enough of a reward for all the hard work you had to do. As always, thanks for watching, and I hope this helped.